In the last chapter, we talked about placing text and working with text in your document. In this chapter, we're going to talk about working with images within your document. We'll talk about placing images, working with the links panel, which is how you manage images that are placed in the document, and we'll talk also about some best practices for working with images within your document. So the first thing when working with images is to go up to the File menu and select the Place command. From there, you can navigate to the images that you'd like to place, the image or images that you'd like to place. Select them and go ahead and say Open. You'll see I now have, again, what's called a loaded cursor. We also had a loaded cursor when we were working with placed text, but at that point you saw a little bit from the text itself next to the cursor. Now I see a thumbnail of the image next to my cursor. There are three ways that I can place this image once I have my cursor loaded. I can click right on my document and that will place the image at its full size. I'm going to hit Control Z to back up. I can also click and drag a marquee and place the image that way. As you'll notice here, the marquee I drag is strictly proportional to the image so that I can't place the image at the wrong proportions unless I decide that I don't want it at the exact proportions, in which case I can hold down the shift key as I'm dragging and that will allow me to adjust the proportions. I'm going to let go of the shift key because I want to place my image at the proper proportions and I'm going to let go and there you can see I've placed my image. I'm going to hit control Z again. If I had margin or guide columns showing up I could then draw exactly to the shape of my margin or my guide and place my image precisely. I'm going to unload the cursor for a minute by clicking on the Tools panel. And I noticed starting out this morning that my Tools panel is currently in the single column vertical alignment. I prefer it in the double column vertical alignment, so I'm just going to click that arrow over the top and switch to the double column alignment. The other thing I can do in placing images, if I already have a piece of my document laid out, so here I'm just drawing with the rectangle tool, here's the box in which I'd like to place my image. I can now go up to File, tell it to place, select my image, open, and it will automatically, with that box selected, place my image in the box itself. But you'll notice that the image is placed at full size. So I'm not seeing all of my image in the box itself. InDesign has some built-in tools to help you adjust the image to the space that you've assigned. They're up in this fit area of the control panel uh, about two-thirds of the way from the left-hand side. The first option allows you to fit the image at its proportional size to the size of the box. But some of the image may be getting cut off. As we discussed in one of the earlier lessons, that frame is sort of like a window. And the frame will only allow you to see that part of the image that overlaps with the frame. Now, if I have my direct selection tool selected, I can click on the, the frame and select the image behind the frame. In this case, my frame is actually fairly proportional to the image itself, but you can see that the image extends a little bit outside the edge of the frame. I can also, once I'm in this image editing mode, adjust the image itself. So I get this brown highlight. I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see it a little better. So I'm selecting the zoom tool and I'm dragging a marquee. You can see here behind my frame, there's this brown outline. That indicates my image edge as opposed to my frame edge. So now I'm going to hit Control-0 to zoom back out and just show you, once I see that hand with my image selected, that means I can click and drag my image to place it. I can also drag any of the handles in the image to increase or decrease the size. Now right now I don't have that image proportional. When I'm clicking and dragging, if I want to keep the image proportional to its original size, I'm going to hold the shift key down while I do that and that will maintain the current proportions of that rectangle. I'm going to hit the control Z command a couple of times to get my image 
back in shape here. So again, I want to discuss the auto-fitting features. The first one will keep the image proportional, but will extend the edge of the image outside the confines of the frame. The second setting will fit the image proportionally inside the frame, even if it doesn't fill the frame completely. So I'm going to click on that second auto-fitting box. And I'm going to actually change the dimensions of my frame a little bit, just so that you can get a better sense here. So now you can see that the image is clearly cut off behind the frame. If I click on it with a hand, you can see that it extends below the bottom of the frame, and I can move it within that frame. So if I click the first button, the image fills the frame, and the image stays proportional. If I click the second button, I now fit the entire image within the frame, but the frame itself is not completely filled. Now, if I'm not trying to fill an exact area, I just want a proportional representation of the image, then I can click this next box, which changes the dimensions of the frame to fit the image size. Sorry, I'm actually going to click. So there are two boxes. One is the one that we just talked about in terms of filling the frame proportionally and then fitting the image within the frame. The next box is one I don't use too often. It fits the image itself to the frame, but without maintaining the proportions. I'm going to click on that just so you have an idea. But the images look pretty distorted and stretched out that way, so I don't use that too often unless it's a very specific uh, application. I'm going to hit the Control-Z key to undo that. But I'll show you the next one, which actually changes the dimensions of the frame to fit the image itself. So now, my frame is the same size as the image. I'm going to hit Control Z again so that we can see the placement of the image. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that last setting here. That just centers the image within the frame. So if I click on that, you can now see the outline of the image extending above and below the frame and the image centered within the frame itself. The last option, which I can check, is to auto fit. And that leaves it to InDesign's algorithms to figure out how that image should best fit inside the frame. So that is basically all of the options for fitting the image inside a frame once the frame already exists.